Welcome to Bitter Reality Brewing. Today, we're brewing a Hefeweizen, or as I was calling it, a Hefe. Um, I kind of screwed up, and if you saw the malt video, you saw where we went around. We talked about whole grains or all-grain malt. We talked about liquid malt extracts. We talked about dry malt extracts. Um, the part I screwed up is I was having some problems with some of my beers, having a hint of an off flavor occasionally, and it drove me nuts. So to figure it out, I, through deductive reasoning, went back to the basics and I learned how to do liquid malt extracts and dry. The part I screwed up on is I did not realize that liquid malt extract has a shelf date or a expiration basically. This is bulk and it only supposedly lasts for about a month before it starts to degrade. It doesn't go bad supposedly, it just isn't as fermentable, isn't as usable. So what's the best way to use wheat? Make a half of bison, half of its wheat, half is Pilsner. I had the Pilsner. Um, so I've got three pounds of wheat here. I've got about another four pounds worth of grains with about three pounds of wheat in here. Or not wheat, sorry, Pilsner. Um, all of it is barley. I'll put the recipe down below for you so you can see what we're brewing. Pilsner, we've got two pounds, eight ounces. Carapils, we have 12 ounces. That gives it head retention, a little more mouthfeel, a um, little more on the foam. Then we use Carahel, which is at 13 SRM. Can give it a little more color. Not a big deal. Acid malt. Six ounces of acid malt. Acid malt is actually going to help us lower the pH. Um, we're not going to go really low like sour, but we're getting it down a little bit. It's going to help. It's not the main part. But basically what it will do is give it that crispness that you're used to in a Pilsner, um, which we want. Um, then we add one of my favorite little side things is I add four ounces of honey. Um, in about a seven pound grain bill, that's not a lot. But that honey is going to give it a hint of sweetness um, that you get from perceived honey, of course. Um, then of course, my, fa my favorite joke is I always say about when I am not great at saying certain things in English is that it's my second language, but my only language. So German is definitely not my language. Um, Halator or Halator, we're going to use as a hop. There's a 3.8 alpha bittering that will help basically just balance the sweetness. It's not going to make the beer bitter. It's just going to help with the sweetness um, so that it doesn't taste very sweet. And then we're going to use a classic White Labs 300 Hefeweizen yeast. Hefeweizen yeast is really the key to getting the flavors that you're looking for. Um, most yeasts, when they're fermented warm, will give you more banana, less clove on the palate. Um, we're going to ferment a little on the cooler, hopefully around 65, maybe 68 on the high side. Um, that's going to give us a hint of banana smell, but it's going to give us more clove on the palate, which is going to accentuate that crisp flavor. Um, and that depth of feel within the Hefeweizen. Um, let's get brewing. So before we get brewing our Hefeweizen, we need to treat our water. Um, we're in Jacksonville, Florida. I'm a little sensitive to bleach. I don't like bleach. Um, not gonna put tablets in, just gonna get distilled water, build my own water profile. Um, we'll go into that on in a different video, but for now, I'm gonna show you a really easy way to add your whatever brewing salt you're using, um, with the exception of course, um, baking soda and calcium carbonate, which of course you want to add, or biocarbonate, sorry, you want to add those later for that of your sparging water. Um, trick. Quite not, not quite that easy, but basically what we're going to do is we're going to toss it in here, we're going to add the water, and we only need about three and a half gallons with the grains. So we're going to add all seven gallons and then use the pump to take out three and a half gallons so it'll all be blended together. All the salts are going to get into all the water and then we'll start the actual brewing. This will also help mix it up, stir it up, break everything, get it dissolved. Um, if you've ever worked with brewing salts, you know sometimes they can clump. calcium carbonate always um, okay we'll get back to you after I get all the water added so hang in there okay as you can see we're using a green father um, if you're not familiar um, great quality product Bluetooth controlled I'm gonna operate everything from a little Android tablet works great um, we're using the micro pipeworks which is basically a shorter pipework system since we are using some extract with some grain. So we're gonna do everything like normal, but with the grain. Once we get the grain mashed, 
sparge, have all the sugars and starches into the kettle as the wort. We'll pull this out, let it drip for a little while. Once it's done, before we reach boil, we'll add the actual liquid uh, malt extract, which is a wheat as we are brewing a Hefeweizen. Um, I like to set this in there early. So as the temperature comes up, I'm not dropping an ice cold piece of metal in there and slowing the brewing down um, before I can mash in. So we're gonna go ahead, just lower it in. And we already have the Hefeweizen pulled up. We're gonna say start brew. Takes a moment. As you can see, the little spinning wheel. You see the Bluetooth emblem on here? It's connected, tells us to add the water, which we already did. So we're gonna say start heating. And it's gonna begin bringing the temperature up. Um, we're doing a multiple step mash, so we're gonna bring it up to about 112 first Fahrenheit. That is Fahrenheit. Um, for all of our European friends or anyone who's not on the Imperial system. Um, I do some things in metrics. I do some things in Imperial, but I make sure that I check my calculators if I'm transitioning from one to another. Um, not like some people we know who have done mistakes. Once it gets heated up, we'll mash in. Um, and then I brought my brew uh, paddle. Hang in there and... We'll return once the temperature is up. Okay, as you can see, mash temperature has been reached, 112. So we're going to begin adding our grains. Once we do that, we'll hit OK. It'll continue and start its countdown. I'm going to add, even though we don't really need it, I'm going to add a little bit of rice hulls here. Just a little prevention. It helps to keep things from getting stuck. Don't really have too many grains in this that uh, I would have to worry about since the wheat is liquid. Um, and then good use for a 16 ounce silo cup, solo cup. Everybody knows them uh, for drinking the beer, but it can also be used for helping to make the beer. Now to avoid dough balls, we're going to stir periodically. And one thing I found that's actually kind of useful is to just get a nice current going and then I can just keep adding the grains. Once we get towards the bottom we can dump a lot more in. Right now I just want to get it started. Okay we're back. I'll lean this over so you can see. As you can see the liquid's hitting the edge of the top. That mesh will help break the water up and allow the water to flow through and grab any bits of grain or particles and bring them back into the mash and treat it as a filter so that we get a clearer beer. Um, I can hit it on the app or I can hit it here, but I'll say set. Basically, it tells us, hey, we're done. We've finished adding the grains. Go ahead. And then it also turns the pump on, which helps if I open it up, and that will allow the malt the water going through the malts to actually flow through and like I said and as you can see it's actually pretty clear you know, there's a little little fog in there not too bad though should be an off yellow just taking a moment and there she goes we've got good flow some of those malt dust off the side uh, starches and sugars that we're going to want there we go and we're going to let this go periodically it'll pause as it's going to the next temperature it'll go through the cycle once we get towards the end and we're going to bring it up to about 168 we'll want to take the green basket up and we'll return at that point um, here's to a great half of bison As you can see, it's running incredibly clear. The grain bed is doing its job and filtering out all the nasty mess. But it smells great too. Uh, we're getting ready to sparge um, just a 
short bit once we hit around 168 we'll mash out okay as you can hear the mash out has finished beeping go down here go hit the beep it's asking us for adding the sparge water we're going to pull this out and we'll add the sparge water Probably the lightest rain bed I've ever had to pull out, which is very nice. Usually it's incredibly heavy. As you can hear, all of the wart or the goodness from the grains is draining into the pot and you can probably see some of the steam coming off. When you're doing sparge, make sure you get something that can hold hot water so you don't burn your hand. Um, or use something that would get damaged because of the hot water. And then we're simply going to pour this over the green bed. This is our sparge water. Of course, it's dripping everywhere and pouring a lot faster, but it's okay. There's a baffle in there. Reduce it. Give it a second. I'm gonna spread it out everywhere. I'm only doing small amounts at a time. Not a big deal. This is, I've had a, someone ask, sound like we were peeing off camera. This is not the case. It's the Anvil hot liquor tank or hot water tank, however you want to look at it from a brewer's perspective or an average person. Um, the temp has gone way down, but it's because it's not actually able to touch the water. This is a 10 gallon, um, good for six gallon type brew systems all the way down to as small as you want. Um, I don't know if I'd go much smaller than maybe four gallons, but each their own. And then we have this pot over here because we'll actually take this and move it down here to allow it to drip. Once it's done with the sparge and all the water is passed through, there will still be some drippings. We'll let them go into this pan. Okay, as you can see, it's 173 degrees Fahrenheit going to 212 for our boil temp and it's time to put the wheat malt, liquid malt extract all the sweet goodness um, directly from the malts basically just liquefied and reduced as far as water so we get this on camera here it looks like honey warning it acts like honey very nice smell and very sweet we're just going to simply pour that in Scur stir going here so we don't scorch the bottom. The trick to get some of this out so we'll simply turn on the pump and get some hot water in here. Use a spoon first to get a, all the really thick stuff out. Kind of see that. It's just a thick syrup. It tastes really good too, but. One of the reasons I don't like brewing so much during the summertime is, of course, anything that's sweet or syrupy also attracts flies.
Now we're just waiting to get up to boil temperature. We're at 173 Fahrenheit. We're gonna get up to 212. I'll stir it occasionally to avoid scorching on the bottom with our uh, brew paddle. See, little bits. I think we got a little bit of grain in there, but it's okay. We'll get it out of the finished product. Once it gets to boil, we'll do our one and only hot addition. Um, 60 minutes. Holotol, 3.8 alpha acid, one ounce. Okay, we were at a boil, 212. It's not as vigorous as I like when you put it on actual propane, but it's a boil, 212 Fahrenheit. We're at 60 minute timer. Normally I would add the hops with a hop basket like this. We just submerge. But since it's only gonna be one ounce of hops at it and it's only one addition, we're just gonna put them in a bag, stick it on the side. A little easier to clean, less of a mess. Hops. Hmm. A little tear in the bag, but that's okay. It's towards the top. Just like you never brew beer, it's essentially like basically tea. I mean, all we're doing is getting the hops and never get it wet. And then get around here so it doesn't go on its own. There we go. So I can get out easy when I need to. And then periodically you want to stir it and just take and rub the bottom if you're using something like a grain father or any of the electric systems. And you don't want to use metal. You want to use something like wood or plastic. Um, something that's soft but can rub the bottom to make sure we're not going to get any kind of caking on the bottom that could cause a scorch. Um, scorching is very, very bad. And you don't want any kind of burnt sugars in your beer unless you really want burnt sugars in your beer. I don't. Okay, we're gonna let this go for 60 minutes. It's gonna boil off quite a bit of the water. Um, we're sitting right now at about, I believe it was about six and a half gallons. Um, we need to get down closer to five. Um, I'm okay with about five and a quarter or a little less than five and a quarter because we'll lose some um, from the trub, which is what the yeast is eating. And basically it's eating the sugars, which will create the trub at the bottom. Um, proteins and other things. Um, we're going to go for now, let it go, and towards the last 15 minutes, we'll add Irish moss that won't bind to some of the proteins and get some of the haze out, even though Hefeweizen's going to be a little hazy. It'll pull out some of those extra things we don't want in the beer. Then we'll add a yeast nutrient, and I'll add an enzyme, which I'll mention later, that I want to help to make the liquid extract we added a little bit more fermentable. Um, it'll dry the beer out a little bit more, um, but that's something I've not tested with an extract, but I'm pretty sure it will help. Um, let's hang in there. Here we go. Okay, we have the external chiller on, and the Hefeweizen is cooling down. As you can see, the temperature is already dropping down to 144. Um, disregard the target temperature as we have the temp off, so it's going to keep going down. What we're doing is we're running cool water in through the blue. The warm water is going out through the red. And then the wort is actually coming in through here with the pump, circulating and going back into the wort as it's running against the edge of the cold water, which is in another pipe, of course. Um, and it's allowing it cool. It's basically an external chilling system. Okay, as you can see, we've gotten the temperature down to 74 degrees Fahrenheit. Um, may go another or two but that's good enough for me i'm basically going to move it over to this carboy which is about six gallons um i like to transfer it to the plastic ones just to verify measurements and then i'll move it over to the glass and pitch the yeast and we should be good so I'll change this over we'll take the cooling system off and add the regular arm so that we can allow the wort to flow over into the carboy And the wart is building the 
going to the carboy. So if you mention it's a plastic carboy, we'll use it for measurement and then we'll move on to glass carboy. And we want the bubbles, so it's oxygen. That helps add the oxygen, which the yeast is going to need in the beginning. 